I'm a mech and electrician who started serving an engineering apprentice in 1962 after leaving school. Right, that's Is that okay. Uh, if I could just leave that on the desk, maybe that would be an easier way. Okay. Just say your name again, now just check the levels. Hi, hi, Mick. Um, electrical uh, electrician who served an apprenticeship starting in 1962. I'll hold the mic. Do you want me to start from um, the actual test out to do to get the apprenticeship or just go into the apprenticeship? Uh, Let's start with the tests. Yeah, talk about the tests. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. When you're ready. Uh, okay, yeah, we're going. Um, on leaving school, um, I went for a test at the Michelin Tire Company uh, for an apprenticeship, an engineering apprenticeship. We started with um, the tests. The first tests were um, maths, English, general knowledge, um, which took about half a day to a day, the test. Once you've passed that, um, then you progress and you go for interviews and um, high tests and all different sort of other tests. Um, once you've gone through that, you have a final test, which is uh, you go on a camping course. I went on a camping course and each individual at the time um, got to do the different tests and my actual test on that day was to get the other people who were with me around me and I got to get a cart with wheels across a river um, and get the people who were with me to do it. I didn't actually do it, I instructed the people who were with me. So you took the wheels off, you got a rope across and a pulley and you hadn't got to go in the water. So that was actually the final trade test and then you went in and they said you got the apprenticeship. And from there it was like a five, six year apprenticeship. I actually didn't do the, uh, what you call a pre-apprenticeship, which what a lot of them did, which was you went in all different areas of the factory and you could go into like the rubber section and be a technician involving rubber in the making of the tyres or you could do an engineering apprenticeship where you could do fitting, electrical work, welding, turning and all that. So my first year was actually in the apprentice school went to um, college one day and one night a week and also from work they gave you trade tests and you took work home um, and did work at home and then brought it back um, but all the instructors were from like uh, either the army or the navy so it was very regimented and you had a good, good sense of discipline um, in fact uh, one of the first things we did while we were apprenticeship was you had like a dice and it was like in a cube form with a base and you had to file that by hand and you've got to get every surface flat square and parallel and I think overall mine you didn't do it all in one go you did it in like over a period of time and it took me 144 hours to complete which you know they wouldn't let anything go if like something went straight or square you had to go back and redo it until it was perfect. Um, that's why today, like my son says, <laughs> I am, you know, want everything just right. So that was part of the apprenticeship. <coughs> and from there, um, went on to be an electrician after my first year. So you, you sort of did work in the apprentice school um, with instructors regarding all the technology and the actual practical side of being an electrician. Um, once you'd done that and you're okay, you went onto the factory floor after a couple of years and you go into like a shop, which was like you got all the electricians and uh, mates, electricians mates in there and you went to work with an electrician uh, and they taught you like, how, you know, at the practical side of the job and plus the theoretical side. So you spent like four years with them and then probably only last year they'll allow you to go out on and do some work on your own, which was checked on. Um, 
But I think uh, the time period and everything, we, uh, Owen, also during the apprenticeship, every day you did an hour of physical education. You went to the baths one day, you did football training one day, cross country another day. So it wasn't just an apprenticeship engineer and they, they gave you an overall um, apprenticeship, you know, doing different things. Sounds like hard work. It was very hard work because I used to catch a bus from Audley in the morning. Um, I went out at 20 past six. My bus went from Audley to Newcastle, from Newcastle to Stoke, from Stoke to West End, and I got there at eight o'clock. The same at night, so you got home about half six, seven o'clock. Um, and then you got to do homework from, like, the apprenticeship. Um, plus, when you went to college, you went straight from work to college. And then you did, because I played football, did football training, so I stayed at work probably two nights a week to do football training. I kind of get the impression, uh, like, when people do apprenticeships today, that it's sort of seen as a perhaps a way where you don't have to do any exams or you don't have to, you know, do as much sort of academic side. But from what you're saying, it sounds like you did have to do quite a bit of sort of academic stuff as well. Yeah, we had to do both sides, practical and academic, you know. And to be honest, I wasn't the cleverest of persons, like, on the academic side. And I did find it really hard, like the, the mathematics when you did logarithms, algebra. You had to do all these um, calculations to get cable sizes and um, what size fuse board you put in, you know, and all different things. Um, so the technical side of it, you know, it wasn't easy at all. So you did sort of both. But I think now, um, nothing against people who go for degrees and everything, but we work on the university and we've got... <laughs> no, go ahead. We've got people on the university who are over us. My, my direct boss, Jim, he's gone through the system where he's been an apprenticeship and he's come through, but everybody else over him has come from universities who've done degrees or and different things, and they don't understand the basics of the job because they're over us, but they don't exactly know what we do yeah. and they don't understand... And the university lose thousands of pounds by not just coming to ask us our opinion on things because they've read in books and they think they know how to do things. And then when they come to it, they do it wrong. Um, if they would just come to us in the first place, we could help them a lot mm. in regards, you know, certain things that they're doing on the university. Um, would you rather take the camera off if I'm going to ask about today's? Mm. Okay, lens is closed. Um, so I'll give you one situation. <laughs> is, this isn't going to be recorded or anything, is it, or talked about? Or... Um, can I take a recording of it and not identify you or not use it? Just for my own. Well, this record. is about a person on here that who has got qualifications. Can you co can you give him a fake name? Um cool person Bob well, well can I just tell you without recording because okay. you'll remember it okay um, it's regarding like um, 